Hi, everybody. It's Georgia Rose, and I'm in the soul space. Bobby and I were just having a lot of fun right before airtime. I don't know. We were laughing a lot, but it's always good to have a little joy, right? So I hope all of you had a fabulous holiday weekend, whatever you celebrate, or if you just went and did some gardening, just get a little joy in your life, right? So tonight, we're going to talk about so much stuff. We're going to put the number on the screen right away, because if anybody wants to call in for a card pull or a little mini reading, definitely do that. I am going to talk about a bunch of stuff tonight. As usual, I am probably going to start off with a little astrology. But first of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, I am Georgia Rose, and I am a psychic intuitive and an astrologer and a healer and a normal, average, everyday real person. And um, I live in an earthbound world. I'm a real estate broker by my daytime life, and I also train agents and do life coaching. And um, in my spare time, this is what I do. Labor of Love is the Zenkuda Soul Space. I am the founder of a lifestyle company called Zenkuda which is for people who are really ambitious and really serious about their zen. And a while ago, I guess now it goes on about two years, I um, actually coined the word and trademarked the word zenkuda because I had been called in my earthbound life as a realtor a barracuda sometimes. And I always thought that was really good because it meant I was a go-getter, but oftentimes it had a little bit of a negative connotation. And so when I decided to be more spiritual in my life, quite a while ago, I guess I've been on this spiritual trek almost like 18 years now, um, I coined and trademarked the word Zen Kuda, because it's kind of like a Barracuda, but someone who's a Barracuda about their Zen. So that's where the word Zen Kuda comes from. And I would love it if all of you out there would share the show. In a minute, I'm going to look and see um, who's out there tonight, who's watching with us, and Got a bunch of people on, and we'll get, get into it. So if anybody, again, wants to call in, numbers on the screen, 516-945-9099. If you're just listening, if you're in the car, or if you're home, or if you're on Spotify, or Roku, or any of those things, I don't know really what they are. <laughs> I guess I should learn, but um, no, I kind of know. So if you're just listening and not watching, that's the number. Call in if you want, talking about anything. So the first thing I want to talk about tonight is... The astrology, because that's usually what we open with. Uh, Sometimes I have a guest. Tonight I don't. Tonight you get me all to yourselves. So if you have any questions for me, you want to know more about me, you can ask. So I've got, who have I got on here? I've got Susan Mack and Sarah and Janine and Christine and Joanne and Janine. Did I say Janine? I think I might have said her twice. So anybody who's out there in the soul space, send up a bunch of hearts. Give everybody a little love in, extra love in for those of us who spent time with family that maybe wasn't so fun and joyful this weekend. And we've got some things to work out. We're going to send you guys some love. And for those of us who are coming off a beautiful weekend with lots of joy and lots of connection, send that energy out to everyone in the world who needs it. And boy, do we all need it right now. So what's going on with the stars? So we have Pisces, Jupiter, in, I'm sorry, in Pisces, we have Jupiter, Mars, and Neptune, and Venus. So we've got four planets in Pisces. So if you've been feeling a little uh, forgetful, or spacey, or wonky, or just like very ethereal, almost floaty, that is probably why. The Pisces energy is really heavy duty right now, and Pisces is an energy of imagination, of dreams, of um connection with the other worlds, other realms, galactic, alien energy, spirits, angels. That's Pisces energy helps us connect with that because it's very dreamy. Pisces is going beyond the realms of possibility to what is impossible. So in its highest octave, Pisces energy can be used for dreaming, for meditating, for connecting with past loved ones, for going very deep into the spiritual realm, connecting with whatever your religion is. In the lower energies, Pisces can be addiction, um, wanting to have escapism in your life, whether that's, you know, um, games or, you know, maybe TV, binge watching things. It could be overindulgence. So those are the Pisces themes. With Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Neptune all in Pisces, that energy is really going to be expanded, especially since we're still in the energy of that first time in 165-year meetup of Neptune and Jupiter. 
So if you're feeling spacey, that's why. I don't think you need to run to the doctor unless you're really not feeling good. I wouldn't say don't go. But um, that's probably why. The other reason why you might be feeling a little spacey or forgetful is also because we've been having huge solar flares. We're going to have Phoenix Green on the show again to talk about that and the vibration of the earth and all that stuff. Um, Something to watch out for this week is tomorrow, April 19th, the sun moves into Taurus. So for all of you Taurus birthdays, happy birthday. Um, When the sun moves into Taurus, that ups our game with determination. We become more fixed on things. We become a little more focused. So that Neptunian and Jupiter energy in Pisces might get a little bit lessened with that, you know, floaty feeling. With the sun in Taurus, we might feel a little bit more grounded. Let's hope. Um, With the sun in Taurus, this month is really a great time to go out in nature a lot. Taurus loves nature. It loves gardening, that kind of stuff. Um, The North Node and Uranus um, and Mercury are all in Taurus also coming up, and that's really going to help us concentrate and focus, but Uranus may be a little electrical there, so if you have personal planets or if your birthday is in Taurus, you may start to feel um, sudden unexpected surges of things happening that you didn't really plan on, so be careful. Check everything twice, you know, especially if you're traveling. Also, as the planets meet up in Taurus, those electrical surges, um, Uranus has the, um, Taurus Taurus has the Uranus factor now, that Uranus energy is very changeable, sudden, electrical. Um, It could be really great stuff, things happening that you've been waiting to happen, or it could be things that maybe you've been, been putting off, and all of a sudden they'll come into your life. So just know with Mercury and Uranus there, we may hear more about COVID, we may have a short spike in COVID. Um, I think we're kind of through with that energy, though, because right now all the planets are direct. On the 29th, Pluto goes retrograde, so that's going to slow us up a little bit. I'll be here to talk about that. But right now I think we're kind of done with most of the COVID energy because all the planets that were in Aries are moving away from Aries. Um, The only one left in Aries for the rest of the next, I'd say, year, two, two years is Chiron, which is the planet of the wounded healer which is where we do our work on our inner wounds and our inner child. I don't think that's going to really affect the COVID spike. I think all those planets in Aries was kind of making everything move really fast. So expect maybe a small surge when Mercury and Uranus touch point in Taurus. That'll go away. And then I think we're going to start to feel some little bit more harmonious energy this week. Now, it won't last very long because we are coming up eclipse season on the 30th, but I'll be here to talk about that. So wanted to talk a little bit about ambition. And I was thinking a lot about ambition the other day. And ambition kind of got a little bit of a dirty word connotation, dirty feel somewhere along the way. I don't really know how that happened. I went and did some research on the word. But one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about ambition was because, like I just said, we have this um, Uranus in Taurus energy coming. And Uranus is the planet of sudden unexpected change, but in Taurus, it's more grounded. Taurus wants to be grounded. Taurus is the bull. It wants to have steady feet. And so when the planets are in Taurus, and we have four of them in Taurus right now, by we will be by the end of the week, there's kind of this factor of upping the game on determination. And that made me start to think about ambition and how determination plays into ambition, but how it's actually really different. And a lot of times people who know me personally um, will ask me a lot of questions about, you know, being successful and things like that. Because as you know, if you really want to get somewhere in life, you ask someone who's been there before you. I always do that. You know, when I was trying to, you know, put a podcast together, I went to people who had done it before. Uh, when When I opened a real estate brokerage firm, I went and sat with people who already were broker owners. That's what you do in life. If you want to succeed, you, you become humble and you go to people to that know better than you do. So now that I'm a little bit of a Yoda and a little older and wiser, people will come to me and ask me things about real estate or about spirituality, et cetera, and I I do life coaching. And a lot of times people will ask me questions about my ambition. And they'll say, you know, how you seem really determined whenever you have a goal, how do you stay ambitious, how do you stay determined? And a lot of times people will have, especially those who know me from my earthbound career in real estate, will think I'm ruthless or that I am, you know, a real, like I used to, I once overheard someone call me a barracuda. And I've never really been that way. Um, I've, I'm competitive, but I'm competitive with myself. So when it comes to ambition, I'm a little different. And I want to tell you all tonight how ambition works for me in my life 
And maybe you guys can apply some of my theories to some things you do. If you want to call on the show, maybe you can actually make what I do better and expand on it. But I'm going to talk personally about what I have come up with when I really went in deep and thought about the, the, the things that make me unsuccessful and the things that make me ambitious in a healthy way. And it all started when I was a kid. I have to say that ambition in some ways saved my life. And I don't know if I was born ambitious with that gene a little bit more amplified than some people or if it developed because of adversity. Um, I grew up in a really rough house. I grew up in an abusive household. I grew up in a place that was not always fun to be. Um, as a child, I sat in closets a lot, you know, till screaming stopped or violence stopped. And so I think when I look back, the seeds of ambition were grown on that closet floor. Um, I can remember, you know, being hurt as a kid, physically, emotionally, um, in a lot of different ways. And being, you know, even as young as six, seven years old, feeling hopeless and maybe sitting on that closet floor. And then all of a sudden, a feeling coming up within me of this little, like, flame, a flicker. And at first I thought, well, maybe, you know, that was hope. I'll identify that as hope. But it wasn't. It wasn't just hope. It was ambition. Because even as young as that, sitting in that closet, there was a part of me that felt like I didn't belong there and that I was created for something better. Now, where that came from, I have no idea. Maybe it's just human perseverance, um, survival, whatever you want to call it. But ambition was the seed of that. And so even from a young age, I think something inside me said, no, you can do better. No, I will not be like this. I'm going to get out of here. And that drove me my whole life. It still drives me in some instances in a more healthy way. But I think that even as a little girl, I was ambitious. And one of the things that I faced growing up was, you know, if you're a woman especially, and I know there's a lot of stuff out there about gender now, but speaking from, you know, quite a few years ago when I was a kid, if you're a little girl and you want more and you're ambitious, it's a dirty word. You're told you're, you're too, too much, too pushy, too loud, too much, too. You're too. You're one of those two people, right? And so I think somewhere along the way, when I started to really become more self-respective and self-understanding, I had to understand that ambition wasn't bad. And I think maybe for a lot of little boys too, we're told not to reach too high, right? It's gotten a little different. I think today's generation is told to reach beyond impossible. But for a lot of kids growing up in the 60s and 70s, we weren't told that so much. And so I think that ambition for me, that feeling, evoked a lot of power and a lot of determination. But for some reason, there was something inside me that from a very early age linked it with soul and linked it as a savior. It was like, you know, ambition was this prince, you know, Prince Ambition, who was coming in and putting the right slipper on my foot. And he was magical because every time I had my head hanging in that closet like a dog, and had no hope, that little flicker would come back and tell me that someday I was going to be something. And I never let go of that, no matter what situations I was in. And believe me, I've been a lot of places in my life. I had a first marriage where I was dragged across the floor and beat to a pulp. And I never lost that flicker that I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to, I'm going to aspire to be something better. I've been sick. I've been in grief. I've been a lot of places in my life and that ambition never left me. That spark of ambition that was linked with my soul that knew I had a purpose. And you see, that's the difference between being ambitious and just wanting something and being hungry and being ambitious and knowing what you want to eat. And for me, from a young age, I knew what I wanted to eat. And I wanted to be respectable. I wanted to be cared for. I wanted to help other people so that nobody else was ever sitting in the bottom of a closet. Even at six or seven years old, that's how I felt. And that was ambition. That was really ambitious of me to want to be like that, right? So when we're thinking about ambition, 
what I would say is link it with your soul purpose. That's what ambition is. You know, just like I made the analogy of Prince Ambition and putting that glass slipper on my foot and saving me like a fairy tale. Well, that Prince Ambition has been with me, I think, since birth. And he's never been dis- dissolved. He's never been disavowed of his journey, of his trek, of his mission. And at the worst times in my life, he's flickered alive. And at the best times in my life, he's been there to keep me warm in some really amazing places. I've accomplished some amazing things in my life that if I told you all about them would sound like I was bragging, but I only got there for, through, you know, basically blood, sweat, and tears. I had very little support in my life. And, you know, most of the people who did start to support me never really stayed very long. So I really think that Prince Ambition has been my fairy tale and been my driver. And so when I talk about linking that with soul, what I mean is, We can think of ambition in a literal way, right? Like we can want something. You know, I want to lose 50 pounds or I want to buy a BMW or I want to be the top agent in my office or I want to be the number one at something. I want to be the fastest runner in the school. We'll have an ambition, right? But if you take that ambition literally, you're missing the boat. There's something inside the ambition. There's a symbolism. And you can look at life literally, and then you're missing out on things. It's when you look at life symbolically, and those symbols are linked to something within you that means something. That's when you're living a symbolic life, and you're understanding what things mean. I think the mistake a lot of people make when they can't make their goal is because they're looking at it literally, and they're not attaching the feeling, the emotion, the symbolism to it. And ambition is an emotion. Ambition is an emotion that you've got to attach to some kind of symbolism so that it means something to you. When I started my real estate career, I was determined to be a top agent. And eventually, I made it to the top 1% in the nation in my company. Huge feat. But when I took on that real estate training and I started to do it, I did it for an aunt of mine who had passed away who was a dreamer. She was a beautiful lady. She was like a second mom to me. She lived with us growing up. She oftentimes was a protection for me in a very noisy, sometimes violent house. And when she died, I was actually in my real estate classes. And she was a person that all her life suffered from great anxiety. And she would have these beautiful dreams of things she'd want to do, places she'd want to travel, but she would never be able to do it. She could never complete or finish anything that she, she strove for. And when she passed away during my decision to get a real estate license, I decided to devote my career to her. And so my ambition became anchored in a symbolism. And it lit a fire in me that no one was ever going to put out because I did it for auntie. I was going to complete something in my life in honor of her life because she never got to complete what she wanted. And so that's what ambition's meant to be. It's meant to be part of our soul space. It's meant to be linked with some beautiful symbolism that means something to that, that, that goes back to the minute we were ignited at birth and is something that we want to do. And so it could be a small thing, it could be a big thing, it could be a grand gesture or just a small thing that only means something to you. But I think ambition is really important for us to have, and I think it's really important for us to keep in our life. And when we think about that idea of living literally or living symbolically, I think we should apply it to everything. Because it's my belief that everything in the world is light, right? We, we are light. Everything is light. So if you think about things in their symbolism, now it becomes something as simple as, you know, you're looking at birds out in the yard and all of a sudden those birds become light and you can go within them. You can be part of them because you are light too. And so now that feeling of ambition becomes, I want to experience more things. I want to experience a deeper level, And we start to live a really beautiful symbolic life, not that literal life that is empty and has us chasing our tails and has us running around in circles, right? And when we do that, think about it, we're moved. Life moves us then when we attach it to symbolism. And when we attach our ambition to our soul space and the symbolism that lives there, that sometimes only we know about. When we do that, 
Now everything moves us. It's not just literal. It's not just a tree. It's not just a car that gets us to and from someplace. It means something. We've worked hard for this. It's meaningful. That tree is beautiful. I've never seen it so green. Now it becomes different. And if you think about it and put it in simple terms, we walk around banging our heads against literal things. How many times a day do you hear people say, literally, da 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 we're, we're obsessed with literal. The world is not a literal place. It wasn't meant to be lived in a literal way. And so when we go into a soul space, we have to remember that and remember the emotion. The emotions are our power and the symbolism within those emotions are our ambition. And if you think about it in a really simply put way, when we watch a sunrise or a sunset, it moves us, right? Because we see symbolism in it. In it. It's not literal. It's not like, oh, the sun's setting. Do, 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 do. We feel it. Maybe we feel a little ambitious about something when we are inspired by that. And maybe we just have an ambition to watch it every day. I did that during COVID. I would go and watch the sunset every day. So that's all I got about ambition. I don't know if you guys got any comments. I don't know if that was too deep for everybody. But I just think it's time that we all start embracing our ambition because God is so powerful. And I really think that when we can't find our purpose, maybe we're squashing that. Because I think a lot of us have been conditioned to do that. And we have to have a really good relationship with our ambition. It has to be healthy. We have to know we're worth it and we deserve it. And we're, we're supposed to want things. And we're supposed to strive for things. Even material things sometimes. If it gives us satisfaction without attachment, right? So I think you can be spiritual and ambitious. I think ambitious is a very spiritual thing. <laughs> and I don't think you're supposed to give it up because you're in a cult or you're in a religion or you're, you're now worshiping something. I think that God wants us to be really ambitious and he wants us to be better humans than we are. So that's all I got about ambition. So uh, comments here. Um, here we go. So I am good. Thank you, Mickey. Um, Monica says she's missing the signs. Okay, so we're, we all miss signs sometimes, you know? And sometimes I get messages for people and I'll text them the message and I'll say this just, you know, from heaven or from God or whatever. And I don't know what it means. You know, it's for them. But I think when we're missing the signs, it's very, very important for us to spend time with ourselves. I think we have to go within and within and within. And I say that a lot on the soul space. And we can help each other go in. Because human connection especially if you just sit and have a cup of tea with somebody or a little glass of wine or, you know, you listen to some beautiful music in the company of someone, or maybe you lay on your lawn and just watch the clouds. Sometimes we have to do it in the company of each other in order to feel connected. When we don't see the signs, it's because we're disconnected. And sometimes we're so disconnected, we need someone's help to connect us, you know? So I think that is one thing if you're not seeing the signs. And the other thing is... Um, what really works for me a lot is if I meditate, but I do a meditation where you're going back to before you were born. And I know that sounds kind of funky for some of you that maybe are just starting to meditate, but before we were born, we were something. We were an energy, we were a light, we were another lifetime, whatever you believe. And I think sometimes we miss the signs because we're so caught, caught up in looking for them and in the literal world. And we need to go back to the world that's more symbolic and emotional. And in order to do that, we have to go back in the space before this time and sit in the, the arms, in the lap, in the energy of source, whatever source is for you, God, creator, um, a, a certain symbol, a god, a, a planet, an energy, um, an angel, angels, um, galactic energy, Palladians, whatever source is for you. There's no right or wrong if you believe it and, it and it feels right. So try a meditation where you go back into the arms of that source and you'll, you'll definitely get your answers. So um, any questions? If anybody wants to call on the show, I'm going to do uh, cards. It's so true. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to get back to a couple of the comments and do some cards. So Bobby, you got it.
Hey, we're back. So I wanted to just say, um, Sarah was just commenting about how she's probably kind of, you know, ignored or squashed her ambition. And it's so true. I think all of us do it because I think we're always like, you know, we don't want somebody to think like we're, we're too grabby or we're too much, you know. And um, I was talking to somebody the other day when I was preparing for this show. And it was really cool because sometimes when you talk to people, things come out that you're not really aware of. And I realized how much I've changed over the years, even in my, you know, earth, what I call my earthbound career at real estate, where I used to always want to be in the front of the room. And I remember when I, when I was a youngin in real estate, you know, you always want to like, you're like a sponge and you just want to be everywhere and you, you're, you're jockeying for the position, you know, and um, you want to talk a lot. You want, we want people to know what you know. And now I am perfectly content to sit in the back of the room. I like to watch everybody else jockeying for position. <laughs> it's kind of entertaining. But like, I know what I know. I don't need to tell anybody what I know unless they ask for it or unless I think it's really important. Um, I don't talk just to talk, you know. So um, that's like a really interesting thing for me because I think that comes with like just age, wisdom. And what I would say if I had to give the young me um, advice, it would probably be don't, don't talk so much, you know. People get you, you know, people are going to get it. So if anybody wants to call in and um, ask me anything you want, elaborate on our, um, Aaron says, people always think you're too much, go for it anyway. Yes, Aaron, that is absolutely true. <laughs> if anybody wants to ask me anything or pull cards, just call numbers on the screen. It is 516-945-9099. And uh, so you see, I'm a little bit different in the soul space now. I'm talking about myself a little bit because I want you guys to... Chime in on your stories. I want to hear what's going on with you. Anybody have a story about ambition they'd like to tell? So I'm going to pull a card from Monica. Monica, maybe the card will help you get your signs. You said you were missing the signs. So we'll see if it, uh, it helps. We're getting a call. Monica will pull your card after the call. Hi, you're on the Soul Space with Georgia Rose. Hey, Georgia. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Who am I talking to? This is Dave Holtzman. How are you? Hi, Dave. How are you? Completely committed to my lack of ambition. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm not. <laughs> but sometimes you have I'm to glad, do that. And, I'm, and I am very glad that you're not, too, because your energy is needed. So that's, I think it's very important. And I uh, think I needed my lack of ambition, too. So <laughs> I'm the interview yang. So do you have a question or a card pull or whatever? Pull a card because I am in the midst of a, a energetic shift of, of monumental proportions that has basically taken the hermit in my life and, and turned them into something completely different. So now talk to me about that a little bit. Like what's changing for you? Do you think it's because of what's going on with world energy or is, do you think it's your personal energy? Oh, I think it's, it's, it's universal. <laughs> 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 my universe is just my universe. Now, you, um, you also do ways. readings, correct? I think I saw on your page you do readings, or no? I, I mean, no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm a bit of a Hayoka empath. That's me. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm a clown. That's, that's, that's my path. You're an my, empathic and, clown. And, and, that's and, classic. You're like Jerry Lewis. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to pull a tarot card for you and a soul card for you. <laughs> I have to tell you, as you're speaking... I feel like um, you definitely need grounding, but you know that. Um, I'm just, I'm just actually, exactly what I'm doing right now. But okay, because I'm, I'm getting that really strong. And, and, and yeah, I, 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 I feel the energy come up right now in between me. I, and actually, this, I actually went so high, and I felt myself crashing before. And I, I was that's one of the reasons why I made sure I brought myself to you. Um, at some point, we, you and me will actually have a, a private conversation. I would um, love that. I would absolutely. But I, love I mean, that. I, I yeah, yeah. We, we. I mean, I, I think I texted you that. But I mean, I, I I've been moving into the speed of light in terms of the energetic shift that I've experienced. So it's it's. Um, well, you're moving along I mean, pretty I, fast. I have to say, I feel like there's a lot of changes coming for you at once. When is your birthday? What day? And just you don't have to give me the year, but the uh, month and day, if you want. April 10th. <laughs> okay, so you just had a birthday. All right, so 
so your son is, it's so funny because I have a very good friend who's April 13th. So you're, the reason why you're so ungrounded more so than normal, because I think you normally are, are kind of like, you know, floaty, but, um, but you, the, the Neptune Jupiter conjunction that just happened first time in 160 years would be on your son if you were born April 10th. So that like ignited a lot of things in you. If your, your dreams are probably really active. I am not much of a dreamer, actually. I'm, 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 and I have to say that I do relate to your... My childhood was not violent, but there was an emotional violence and, and a... Um, yeah. I, I mean, my my, actually, my trauma started at birth. <laughs> That's the best way I In can utero. Say. <laughs> it, 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 literally, it literally did. It literally... I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. And, and it started there. So that, um, I, mean, I was... I'm going to tell you what I'm getting on energetically from you, all right? And I will tell you, you're a little bit hard to read, not be, not because you're closed, you're wide open. You're a little hard to read because there's a lot of energy. It's almost like, you know how um, how atoms are, like, illustrated? Like, you have the energy that's, like, whirring around? I feel like your energy is just whirring all over. It's like, woo! You have a lot of energy. So... There- there's definitely some worry, but it's more like the sun was coming out of my eyes. That's the best way I can say it. And then, and then just leading a, a, I'm catching a little breath, a breath. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, I think you do dream very actively. I think you're just not remembering them because I'm getting that at night. You're getting messages at night. Oh, nonstop. But I'm not dreaming. I'm like little. Well, maybe I'm lucid dreaming. If you want to put it that way. Yeah. I'm so I'm so connected to my. I've never been disconnected to my higher power. I've. And I you will be with that conjunction of Neptune and Jupiter ca- happening on your sun, su- right by your sun. That is going to ignite the connection of other worlds for you, other realms, spirit. You just have to be really careful that you don't go too far in. You got to stay really grounded. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tell you the energy that I'm getting from the cards. So there's a lot of opportunity that's going to start coming up for you, but you've got to focus. And I feel like your focus is way off. So you have to find something that definitely grounds you, whether it's a ritual or routine every day, whatever that would be for you. Um, A lot of times when I read someone's chart astrologically, I'll see what element they're lacking. Like if you have no air in your chart or if you have no, um, uh, um, you know, earth in your chart, I'll say if someone with no earth in their chart, I would say, you know, go for walks in the woods. Someone with no water in their chart, I'd say go by the water. So I think there's something that you have to find that is comfortable for you, something that really grounds you. Um, What kind of music are you listening to lately? (laughs) Because something's coming in with the music is like all over the place. Well, first of all, my my drum will be arriving probably Thursday or Friday. There you go. I'm 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 going to the guy that's making it. I'm going to spend the day with him. That's so going to ground that's, you that's, a lot. The drumming's going to help yeah, a lot. I, 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 yeah, I know that. I know that. Although, although I have to say, I went to a drum. I, you know, the guy's making my drum lent me his drum, and I went to a full moon. And it's just the anxiety that just came came into me because I just wasn't. I wasn't. Not only was I grounded, I just was was the anxiety. I guess. Yeah, I guess I was anxious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing with the Jupiter-Neptune um, concentration on your sun. It's going to also make you jittery because a lot of times, think about it, um, you know, it feels good sometimes to float, right, and and feel like ethereal almost. But then if it starts to become really intense, you get a little scared because it's like you're floating away, you know. So you no, are... You, uh, no, there's no fear here. There's, there's, there's a surrender here. That's what's going on. I mean, for okay. me, I can, that's good then. I mean, I, the thing, the thing that I can tell you that I'm experiencing is 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 a, is an awakening on on a very very powerful level. That's okay. for sure, and and I'm and I'm to- totally content and happy to, to let that come into me. You know, it's yeah, it's, and that's it's what always, the cards are showing. Always, the soul always, cards that I picked are showing that definitely. Yeah, it, it, it's always been there. It's I've always I've, I've always had a spiritual path and a kind heart. But um, now you're allowing it so, to really come in. Um, that, well, now what I'm doing is I'm allowing myself to let others um, come into me. That's the best way I can put it. Well, it's interesting that you say that because one of the cards that I got was um, the way the card configured that I threw them on the table actually shows you moving away from taking on other people's burdens. 
And when I oh, that, that, that's definitely happening. That's yeah, definitely, and when I when so I true. when I see those cards, that also makes me feel. When, once we start to do that, and we start to realize what karma is not ours, and we hang it up, what happens is we we make space to receive. And you know, people that take on a lot of burdens and other people, they they don't allow themselves to receive. And I think a big part of the awakening that you are going through now is allowing, like you're saying, exactly that, to let, allow yourself to receive from others and be in that space of reception. And to open myself up to, to a sense of love. Yeah, <laughs> that I that's was, what I'm talking that about. Yeah. Out. yeah. And, and it's funny, I literally just texted somebody who was asking to talk to me before and to, to vent about some negative stuff. I said, I yeah. just don't have the energy to do it tonight. I need to, I need to take some space, which for me has been, you know, your apps. I mean, I've always, I've always been an open door basically of, of, uh, oh, you know, energetic, um, absorption. That's the best way I can put it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I'm, I'm actually, you, everything you said is on point. Well, I have to tell you, and I'm just going to tell you something you already know, but I want to confirm it for you. What you said is so important, David. You have to guard your energy. And by, gar- by that word, guarding your energy, I don't mean, you know, you have to, it's a negative thing, like don't let something in. What I mean is that you have to be in love all the time. And it's hard because there's a lot of people in the world who might need us, but they're really a drain. And I think that you have to be careful of that. We are, we are, we are so aligned in what you're you're saying to me. I mean, I, I, you didn't even need to say it, but I need, I wanted. You needed confirmation. Yeah. But what I want to say, just in finishing that thought is the more space you free up from doing that and, and allowing those people into your life, and just even listening to them, the more space you free up, the more space you have now to receive the love you really deserve. And one of the things that I see in the cards also, like I said before, is opportunities are coming to you. And it's going to be really a surprise for you because I think things happen in a way that you really don't expect. But at the same time, it's of a nature of things you're expecting. But the way it comes in is even better than you expect. This is also a time where you are looking in the mirror a lot you know, you're seeing yourself, but when, when you start to move through this, it's almost like you're in the eye of the needle right now. When you start to move through that eye, you're going to start to see yourself very differently. And you're going to oh, start to see yourself with story. love, a lot of love. It's, it's, you know, it's funny. It's, 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 I'm so, I'm so in tune with that. I'm so, I, 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 oh, I mean, it's, it's hard to process all at once and, and, but I have, I've, I've done that. I mean, I, I've already, I've already shifted. I, I have to say that. I, There's you know, more to come. So There's definitely more to come. No, it's, it's nonstop. That's, that's how powerful <laughs> the energy has been. The music has been coming through in so many different ways, so many different songs, like never ending. And, and, and just I can feel way. it. I can feel it. Oh, it's, I mean, it's unbelievable. My, my, I mean, it's like my soul has been lifted and, and freed and, and in it's a beautiful way, for it, you. It, 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 it's like it's like you have you know you have that child who's who's um, needed to be protected by the universe, so he went inside, and but he went inside and he and he built the wall that w- would would never quite come down. Right, because there was, there was they're coming down that, now. <laughs> well, the trumpets are blown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Well, I got to tell you, I think you're on the right track. Just talk privately, and I don't want to be your whole show. No, it's okay, but we'll talk. But um, just, you know, stay grounded. Anything that you can find to ground yourself, I have to tell you, I'm so pleased when you told me about the drum. I really felt like that's going to be a game changer for you. I love to drum. And you're going to find it's really, things are going to come out, you know, like just take that drum in the yard and just do what you got to do. And you're going to be, so much stuff is going to come out from the soul. I'm not sure I can take any more love. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a nice evening, David. I'm going to pick a card for Monica. And everybody in the soul space, send David some hearts so he can get through his awakening. And um, how beautiful is that? Send us, some, send us some love too, David. Thank you. You got it. So I'm going to pick a card for Monica because she had asked before. And I know she sounds like she's having a little hard time finding her signs. And the signs are out there, sweetie. They're out there. 
I feel like so, I feel like you got to look up more. Look up. For some reason, I just saw a bunch of clouds in my head. So I'm going to ask you to do that. Yeah, look up. You are walking away from some choices right now, Monica. You know, Monica, you've got like the old leaving you, like the death of the old in with the new kind of a feeling here. Um, just be really careful that you don't get too negative because that's going to really steal your joy. So um, stay positive. I know you always are, but I want you to stay positive because uh, you've got some things coming in. You just got to lo keep looking up to see them. Yeah. Archangel Gabriel is coming in for you, Monica. So I would definitely say some prayers to Gabriel. You know, he's the one of clear messages. So when he comes in, for him to come in in that spread is really important because he's telling me that he has messages for you. So just, you know, try and be quiet. Try and be serene. All right. Uh, let me see who else is coming in. Do, do, do. I got to go to my comments here. Whoops. Just close my screen. Okay. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Anne. Anne said she just learned Reiki. Yes. Um, Reiki, R-E-I-K-I. -I, it means love. Um, I, am an act I am a Reiki master teacher. Um, and Reiki is a healing energy. It's, it's love. It is uh, working with and being trained and attuned to Reiki masters are attuned to the... Um, vibration and the frequency of universal love so that we actually can heal when we lay our hands on someone. I work with a lot of cancer groups and I do healing every month um, uh, for Babylon Breast Cancer Coalition for my, what I call my pink ladies. If you are learning about Reiki or you want to learn Reiki, what I would suggest is um, get Reiki. Go for a couple of sessions with a Reiki master. I do Reiki sessions privately. There's also a very, very good friend of mine who specializes in Reiki work, uh, Kim Shiano at Serenity Within Wellness. You can find her on Facebook. Plug for you, Kimby. Um, love you, Kim. Um, but go get some Reiki if you're, if you're learning about it and you're curious because you're going to find it's beautiful. I actually, the first time I ever had Reiki, this is back, gosh, probably 15 years ago, um, I had an extremely profound experience and it opened me to a certain point and I was, you know, going through some Reiki sessions and then what happened with me was my hands hurt and I didn't know why my hands hurt and then I was like, oh, well, maybe it's because I have carpal tunnel or something and so my hands kept bothering me and then all of a sudden... Um, I decided to become a Reiki master and I went from my level one and the uh, my Reiki master, Catherine Barley, at the time attuned me and my hands didn't hurt after that session and it was because the energy was there and my hands wanted to heal. They wanted to go through that frequency and I was not doing it and so they were hurting me. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, but definitely, definitely do that. So Monica, you got your card. Um, hey, Denise, how are you? I'm going to get a, give a card for Denise Amore. I know she hasn't been on here in a while. I'm here every Monday at 7 o'clock. Um, we're going to have some guests on. I know I have to reschedule John Vassallo. I'm going to have Phoenix Green on again. We're going to have a lot of people on. Um, last week we had Laura Kobus with her horse meditations and her horse um, spiritual um, events. Beautiful. We're going to be doing more of that. And... Um, Let's see, I got about eight minutes left on my show. So let me pull a card for Denise. And if anybody wants to call in, I got like eight minutes left. I can talk to you. Number is probably on the screen. Got King of Swords for you, Denise. I know it looks funny on the screen when I start pulling out of the middle of the deck, but that's because I do it sen um, sensory, whatever spirit tells me. This is your card. Um, so I don't know who the King of Swords is for you, but that would be a woman in your life, Denise, who is very determined, a business kind of a person, someone who's very grounded. Um, I'm sorry, it's the King of Swords. It would be a male in your life. I couldn't see because the microphone was in the way. It would be a man in your life who's very business-like, very grounded. A lot of times a King of Swords also represents legalities, law, a lawyer, or going to court, something like that. So if you have that in the horizon or in the works, it's going to work out in your favor because I also got the world card. And the world card is usually a favorable card. It shows that the world is balanced for you and that you have some good things coming through in your life. So take that with you, Denise. And if there is anything that's legal or law coming up for you, um, if you want to give us confirmation that that's the, the way. Everybody send some positive energy out to Monica. I think she needs it. I don't know why. I just feel like that. And just reading the comments, guys. Um, 
Okay. So we got a lot of people on tonight. So if you guys have anything that you want to see me do in the soul space, let's uh, get it going. Send me a PM or a DM or whatever you want to call it, and we'll get you on there. So I'm going to pick a few cards right now, actually, from my very good friend. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to randomly pick someone who's on here. I'm going to pick a card for... I'm going to pick a card for Aaron because Aaron and I, we talk sometimes on Messenger and he lives in Texas. And this week we both did the same exact thing. We got mad at a client because we thought they, they stood us up and we had the wrong time. <laughs> and I said to him, boy, if that isn't Jupiter Neptune coming in to screw with us. It was so funny. But um, I'm going to pick a couple of cards for Aaron. I don't know if he's still on. Aaron, I got the sun card, with his, which is health. And I feel like you're not sleeping. I've got the sleepless night card here. And I'm going to move him over so you guys can see. I moved him over, Bobby, for the camera. Okay. So I got the sun card. I pulled this one first, Aaron. And the sun usually means you're not always taking good care of your health, but it also means a literal baby. So it could be that someone in your family is actually going to be having a baby, possibly. Um, when it, I interpret the sun card in this read, reading next to the card that I got, which is the nine of swords, which is sleepless nights, losing sleep, worrying, worrying about something, this means to me that maybe you're not taking care of yourself as well as you should be. So if you're worrying about something and it's causing you anxiety or agita, don't be doing that. You got to take care of yourself. And then this card that came up for me, the um, nine of pentacles, is a card of a mom energy, a mother type energy, an energy that is really beautiful, nurturing, very loving. So I don't know if you're worried maybe about something with your mom or something with a mom-like figure in your life, but I feel like that's kind of, you're ruminating about that. I am going to pick one card to confirm that reading and see where that's going for you. Yeah, it's the high priestess. So for some reason, your intuition is playing on you. Maybe you're having a lot of really vivid dreams, or maybe you are uh, getting some, I don't know, kind of like a, a almost like a psychic hit or a, a feeling, a premonition, I want to say, about something to do with this f female. Could be mom, could be someone like mom. But I feel like you're very worried about a situation that's very um, important to her. And the high priestess could be you. It's really almost like someone who's very psychically evolved, who is listening to their intuition, etc., things like that. I do have the Ace of Cups for you, which is new beginnings, but I feel like you're blocking it with worry. So my advice to you would be um, try and do something calming, maybe a calming ritual before bed so that you don't dream so vividly. And less worry, more action, because there's an opportunity coming in for you, something new, something, um, and cups is usually romantic or um, benevolent, very, very um, feely, you know, like a sensitive issue that is new for you, but it's good. It's not like, in other words, it's not like money or anything like that. It's definitely something to do with some more humanistic. Um, so lose the worry, ground yourself, Mom's going to be okay if it is mom. You've got to start really listening to your intuition. Um, if you've ever thought about studying tarot and cards, do it because now is a great time for you to be able to really zone in on that. Okay? And that was for Aaron. So um, that's almost our show tonight. In closing, I want to ask all of you, if you like this show and you want to share it before we leave tonight, it'll stay on your page for a little while. If you want to watch a replay, you can do that on YouTube, either on Strong Island Television or on Zencuda, Z-E-N-C-U-D-A. That's our community. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Zencuda Official. You can find me on Facebook at Zencuda by Georgia Rose. I do astrology charts. I do psychic readings. I do medium readings if you want to get in touch with a past loved one. I do cards. Uh, you can go on my website, zenkuda.com, and book a reading with me. Uh, right now, I'm booking out for May. So uh, tonight, special treat, you get me two times on Strong Island. After me at 8 o'clock, uh, Teresa comes on with Tea Time. And then at 9 o'clock, I'm going to be on Andrew Washington's show, The Truth. I have no idea what Andrew's going to ask me, and I have no idea what's going to happen on that show. But if you're not asleep at 9 o'clock, come on it right back to Strong Island Television and watch me on The Truth with Andrew Washington. Thanks so much, everybody. It was a blast being with you tonight. I'll see you next Monday. And do subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Facebook page because I put videos up randomly during the week on those channels. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.